Mic check, yo, yo, welcome back, everybody. Some on my microphone, hold up there. Welcome back, y'all. How y'all doing out there? We about to crank it up. Y'all know how we do. Hey, um, this video, what I'm about to do now, we about to go real deep, y'all. I'm talking about... I'm about to break some stuff down for y'all that's going to make the hairs on your skin stand up. Now, the foundation of what I'm going to be doing for you today is we're going to be doing a lot of as above, so below, and sinking esoteric science to the human body. Uh, this video is really a part two to the video that we left off with on Bro Sanchez TV. 
And what I'm going to do is start back at the end of that video and then pick back up right where it cut off because uh, a lot of people was, uh, you know, watching that video. And uh, I think it should go viral if you guys share it enough. But a lot of people was watching that and they was like, yo, why did it stop? I don't know why YouTube cut me off at the end, but we're going to watch the last couple minutes of this. And I'll pick back up where they cut me off and I'll finish back up because people was like, yo, yo, what else you was saying after that? So today we're going to be talking about convergence, how our eyes work, how you see. And this is very important because you've been in this body all your life. But do you really know how you see, how you view the world, how your eyes work? That's very important because most of the world, I'll say at least 90 percent, don't know how their eyes work. And because of that, we believe in global programming, heliocentrism, space programming. We went over this on a previous video. Today, I'm going to go more into detail showing you about convergence, how they hid convergence and replaced it with curvature and the symbolism that they used to accomplish that. And it's going to blow you away when you see how deep this occult magic goes. So we're also going to be sinking um, the Taurus field to the human body. People, we're going to be having a lot of fun today. Hit the like button, hit the share button. We're going to be digging deep today. Okay, now, before we do that, let's start this video from the end so we can pick back up off and, and, and finish that. Now, let's do that. Her tongue out, man. Let me show y'all something. This is the secret of secrets. This is an envelope, y'all. This is the secret of secrets, the Jesuit cross, electromagnetism. This is what A5A is showing you. Basically, if you put in looking down a long road, this is show you we're on a flat earth. And this was one of the secrets that let you know you on a flat earth because of how things converge on the horizon line and the horizon line is a horizontal line that's why it's called horizon so if you go down a long road and look out you will see the sea being split by your own eyes because guess what yo your eye is a ball but the earth is not the earth is flat and it's inside of a ball. Everything is backwards today. And Brother Sanchez here to flip you back around, get you back on track. So when you look down this road, you see something called convergence. Since your eye is a ball, whatever you see will converge to a point. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop right there and I'll expound on that. Since our eyes are balls, everything we see converges to a point. Now, a lot of flat earthers already know this, but this still going to be good for you and good for the people that don't know how their eyes work. So what we're looking at right here is a curved mirror. And what we want to pay attention to is how uh, reflections are distorted around the edges of a curved surface. So what am I showing you here is that the middle of this cold, excuse me, the middle of this curved surface is all about perspective, is, is due to where you're standing. If I give you a 360 degree ball that's shaped like a mirror, when and I tell 10 people to stand around that ball, everyone will be looking at the center, their own center. And from that center where they're perceiving based upon their angle, everything on the edges of the ball will be distorted. I want y'all to really pay attention here. All right. So when you're dealing with a curved surface, 
the only part of that curved surface that's not going to be distorted is in the direct center. And that center is also based upon perspective. All right, so talking about a 360 degree ball like your eyes, right? The pupil represents that direct center. All right. Oh, hold on a minute. So guys, listen to me. Your eyes are balls. And if you just go outside today and look out at the horizon, you will see that hold on we let me let me show you something real quick you will see right now look if you look at the side of the at the side of the road the trees are making two triangles pointed inward just like we see here like if you look at Moses you see the two triangles pointed inward now look you see how these trees making triangles it ain't that the road shaped like a triangle. It's that your eyes is bending it. I want you to understand how deep this is now. What you see through your eyes is not the true reality, people. I'm going to say it again. What you see through your eyes is not the true reality. So again, people, if, if you were able to see, here's the thing. Let's go back here. In the middle of this curved surface, you can see that man right there with very little distortion, if any. You can make out his figure and it's not distorted. The legs are not bigger than the head. Now, if that man was to walk over here, his body will start to warp. Now, is that really reality? No, it's not. It's a curved surface bending and distorting reality. I got news for you, people. All your life, what you've been seeing out of your eyes is a distorted form of reality. If you really want to see what reality looked like, you got to learn how your eyes work. Does that make sense? So, in other words, when you go outside and you look down a long road, someone taught you that this point right here is called curvature. I'm telling you that it's called convergence. Now, why is this so important? And even though a lot of y'all may be getting bored with this lesson, but guess what? These people rule the world because we don't know about convergence. Did you know that the Red Cross, the Jesuit Cross, is simply representing convergence? But why? Why? I'll explain. Why does the Jesuit Cross, right, represents convergence why is that so important for them because it was convergence that they hid in order to give you curvature that's the big secret well uh, 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 that's one of the big secrets that's what created the curvature in your mind and the space program reinforces that through the programming that they uh, give us, of course. Now, we ain't got deep yet. Stay with me, but I'm showing you simple stuff. All right, these are secrets to the occult, how they rule the masses because people don't know how they body work. They don't have the knowledge of self. See, our, like I'm going to say this one more time. Our eyes are balls, not the earth. The earth ain't a ball. The earth is an infinite plane, but guess what? How can you see an infinite plane 
through a little bitty ball. Guess how you would see it? Like this. No matter where you go on this infinite plane, the horizon will converge because your eyes around the edges that basically your eyes is limited because only a portion of what you see with sticks out of the face. Okay? If your eyes were hovering outside of your face, you'll be able to see in a goddamn 360, but you can't see behind you because your eye, the part of your eye that you see with is the front part that stick out. I'm, I'm showing you why when you look down a road, you only getting this envelope looking. See, the way we see is limited. You only see a fragment of your reality at any given time. This is so kindergarten, but I got to start here, though, before we crank up. Now, with that being said, let's talk about something because the image you looking at right now, we finna start getting real deep with it. Right now, I'm showing you how you see, how you literally see when you walk outside. But now, I'm about to go deep with this shit, so stay with me. Now, keep this image locked in your mind of four triangles pointed inward. I want you to keep that in your mind because this is very important. Four triangles pointed inward, all right? Keep this image in your mind. Now, let's move on. Look at the human face. I want you to know that the way our eyes bend our reality to form a picture to make sense out of this infinite plane and fragments, wherever you focusing on at any, any, any given moment, it turns it into this right here. Stay with me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come. It's going to come clear. I want you to know that this right here, what you, the way we see is also the way we're built. What I told you earlier was we're going to do as above, so below. I'm going to show you, you can't escape this code of them four triangles pointed inward no matter what you look at. It, see, your two arms and two legs are hooked up inward to your heart, which is feeding all the organs and limbs. All of these four corners point to the energy source, and that's what I'm going to be teaching you today. That all four corners of anything in reality will lead you back to the energy source because those corners rest upon each other in the center where there's zero degrees and zero tension. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? Well, listen, imagine four people sitting back to back on the ground. They all can rest peacefully because everyone balancing out their energy. I'm leaning on his back. He's leaning on my back. And there's two other people going north and south while we sit east and west. So we're making a cross and everybody sent back to back. And guess what? We can fall asleep like that, man. Because you're resting. We all evening out the energy right there, like piling up sticks, right? How the Indians made the teepees. They piled up all the sticks and let them rest evenly to make a triangle. That's how the earth is made. And that's right there is the simple code of the cosmos. Those sticks piled up to make that triangle is what we call Mount Calvary. Okay, because I ain't forgot we're talking about Yeshua. Stay with me. We're going to tie it all together. We're starting right here. So now listen to me. The, this image you see on the screen of how we see our reality is literally how our body is constructed, how the earth constructed and all of that. So now let's get deep because we want to expose the people who told us that this right here was curvature. Now listen, your nose is always pointing at what your eyes is focused on. People, I know everything I'm saying right now may seem like, where is he going with this? But if you stay with me, when I climax, it's going to be like the best orgasm you ever had. No homo. Stay with me. We, we reaching. A, I'm, I'm, have, I'm working you right now. We finna, we finna bust in a minute. Stay with me. Listen, I know you don't know where I'm going right now. But if you stay with me, you will know. Now, listen. 
whatever your eyes is focused on, your nose is pointing at it, all right? So if you looking dead at an object, your nose is pointed at that object. I'm, 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 I'm doing this for a reason. I know it may seem like you don't make sense, but listen, the nose represent the focal point of where all of your energy is basically focused at. If, if, you, if you look at me dead in my face, your nose point at me when you turn your head and your eyes look at me, your voice is projected toward me. Everything is turned toward me, but what's sticking out of your face the most is the nose. Please, people, please stay with me. I know you like, what the hell is he going with this? Listen to me. What sticks out of your face the most is the nose. And the word nose is the word gnosis. And it's the word nosy. You see a nosy motherfucker nose a lot. You see Rudolph the Red nose reindeer know what's up ahead before all the reindeers be behind him. People, I'm finna take you somewhere so deep if you stay with me. Now the word nose is the word gnosis, Gnostic, and it's dealing with the sinus area, the sinus area. And when you say sinus, the root word is sine wave or sand wave. Now we're about to get deep. See, because the nose is the, is the equivalent of the knower or the gnosis. It represents Jesus in between the two thieves, right? Because when you see Jesus, I'm sorry. Damn it, I was organized. Ah, there we go. When you see Jesus in between the two thieves, you got to notice something about Jesus. And remember, when I say the word notice, the root word of notice is no, because when you notice something, you're dealing with the gnosis. I'm going to be sinking this concept to the human nose. And if you stay with me, we're going to have fun and I'm going to blow you away and I'm going to use your doggone nose to do it. And if you were standing in front of me right now, I'll pinch you on your nose like your grandma do. <laughs> but we're going to use your nose today. And, 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 and the reason I'm doing that is because the root word of nose of gnosis is nose. Knowledge is nose. And listen, Jesus represent the nose. And the two thieves represent the eyes because the eyes take in information. Listen to me. The eyes is taking in reality. So the, those eyes are the two thieves and the knower. The know, See, Jesus knew everything. He was trying to teach them thieves. Jesus represent the nose, man. The nose inhales and exhales and what did jesus do what did jesus do he went to hell he entered hell and exited hell now listen what you see in the bottom right corner is your human torus field around your body and if you look at it it got two sides of it that look like your nostrils Look at your human electromagnetic biofield around your body and it looked like a nose. It's got two openings like nostrils. Now guess why this is important? Because your spirit literally is breathing. And when your spirit inhale and exhale, we call it life and death. Everything is micro and macro. Let me blow you away today. Right now, you are inhaling and exhaling to keep you alive. You're sucking in wind. Guess what? On a macrocosmic level, that's what your spirit is doing around your body. See, when your spirit sucks in the elements and enter hell, it puts on earth, water, wind, and fire and have a life experience. When it lets that air out and exits hell, you die. And your spirit leaves this plane. Y'all better hit the like button. I'm about to blow you away. I'm showing you that you are Jesus. And your spirit is real. It came here like an astronaut. And people, the nose is the nasal area. And the root word of nasal is NASA. NASA deals with the nose. 
Look at the shape of the rocket. It shapes like a nose. Look at the human nose. People, I'm trying to free your mind with sacred geometry. I'm trying to free your mind. And if you were standing here, I would pinch you on your nose like grandma did. See, I'm trying to free your mind with sacred geometry, but you got to stay with me. You got to stay with me. Okay? NASA is nasal. Nasal. The nasal. When they bust out of this uh, uh, layer of the atmosphere, it's the same way your nose busts out of your face. And they using a nose. They represent the nose of humanity because they being nosy as hell. They're trying to peek over that ethereal gate like a nosy neighbor. People are blowing y'all away because the symbolism is all around you. You got to open your eyes. Now, let me show you what they trying to do. Hold on a second. Hold on, I got to get some files for you. I know y'all tired of seeing this, but I got to keep bringing it up. Now, we know Nasa in Hebrew means to deceive. I don't need nobody coming preaching to the choir today. I'm trying to teach us some shit about Nasa we don't know. Nasa in Hebrew means deceive. Clap for that person. Give them some clap hands, y'all. Now, pay the hell attention so I can show you what the hell we don't know. And somebody get that man a jackpot, hell. Get that man a jackpot. He, he just showed us something we don't know. For you people that's trying to be the teacher, go start a YouTube channel. If you showed up today to teach you in the wrong place, I'm doing the teaching right now. I didn't do this research for you to show up today teaching over me with shit we already know. All right, now let me continue. So what we looking at right now is uh, the different ethereal barriers that NASA is trying to break through, okay? Now, them trying to break through those ethereal barriers on a spiritual level, the ancestors call that being nosy. People, if y'all listen to me today with an open mind and open up your third eye, I am speaking to you all in a divine language that you read between the lines to solve the riddle. This is my own way I developed the teaching for me to relay a message to your spirit that I otherwise wouldn't be able to teach you with the English language alone. So if you pay attention today and give me your full attention, I will give you some divine. Now listen, the nose is the breather. And if you take the BR off, it becomes the ether. The reason I'm using a human nose is because everything on a human body can be synced to something in macrocosm to show you uh, uh, how everything is fractal in nature. And, and even something that we call a nose. Now without your nose, you can inhale and exhale and you would die. And without the human body, the soul couldn't enter hell and exit hell. So listen to me. Let's go back here. The body, if you look at this thing around your human body, that's the soul. The human don't have a soul. The soul have humans. Now, when an astronaut say they go into space, they put on a suit around their body. When the soul going into earth, it puts on this human flesh. And it, it wraps itself around the human body to influence it, to drive it. 
it, it, its energy is breathed into the human through the crown chakra and out through the root chakra. And your soul is constantly emanate around you and through you, influencing you so its will can be done. In other words, your soul, your invisible soul came here on a mission that it had to complete through the body. And if you don't listen to yourself and the energy around you, the voice inside of you, you won't complete that mission and your soul will return just like you flunked the grade. You got to come back till you complete the mission of your soul. And everybody coming here exercising the will of some God instead of the will of what they soul came here to do. So by the time they grow up, they forget who they are and they start carrying and they start carrying out the will of corporations. And so they got this reincarnation cycle going on on the earth right now, trapping people here. And that's what the whole overpopulation is talk is about. But you gotta read between the lines. Now listen to me. We talking about the nose because the nose is all there is. The nose or the knowledge, the all, the nose inhales and exhales because it represents the seat of the soul on a biological level. Okay, we're talking about Jesus entering hell and exiting hell. This realm that we live in is called Helios. The soul comes here and have a life experience and then it leaves here. And that's how long it takes your spirit to take a breath. The ancestors call it a cosmic breath. We call it living and dying. But the ancestors just call it entering and exiting hell. And we call it inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Because when you enter hell, you suck in the wind. And when you exit hell, you exhale. You take your last breath and you blow it out. You exhale and you exit hell. Okay? So as the body inhale and exhale, the soul also inhale and exhale on a cosmic level, but it takes the soul longer. We call that lifetimes. All right? So now that we got that out the way, we understand that the, the nose... It's the breather. It's the one that goes in and out, in and out. Ain't that's what Jesus did? Jesus came in and out of this earth realm from another realm. And that's what the nose do for the body. In and out. It make the stomach go in and out. It inhale, exhale, suck it, and it's in and out. So I'm just doing fractal syncretism right now to show you how everything is connected spiritually and biologically. Nature didn't create a bunch of different codes. The same way she made the human body, she made the journey of the soul. And I'm going to show you how that worked because if you look at the journey of Jesus, it's the journey of the wind in and out of the body to give you life. Jesus said, I come that you may live. Well, think about it. Can you live without your nose? The nose feeds the heart. It's what connects the human body to the wind outside. So, in other words, the nose acts like a messenger. And that's what Jesus was. A lifeline. Now, let's talk again about NASA because remember that the nose is the North Pole. The nose is the noose. A noose is a loop or a knot. A knot when something like a pretzel. Think of a pretzel knot. See, the root word of knot is Gnostic. Gnostic, Gnostic. The nose is where the face ties up at all the uh, different different organs and things that make up the face reach a peak and pile up and that's where you get a nose that's the that's the the the, the, the that's the peak of the pyramid the life bringer that all seeing eye and and see the thing about the nose you know it's the noose and the word noose is also the word news 
a nosy motherfucker always trying to get the news, right? And the word news became the word noose. So I'm showing you all this to show you that the North represent the nose where when you go to the North Pole, you will know the secrets of the cosmos and of the Earth. But what, what happens is now with space programming, they have these rockets that represent a nose. And they tell you that they know the secrets. When they go up there and come back down, it's like inhaling and exhaling or them dying and being reborn and coming back with the knowledge Jesus had. These are your modern day Christ. That's why they're worshipped. Now remember that the, the root word of nasal is NASA. They represent the knowers, the nosy ones. See, the thing is this right here. They telling you we went through these gates and we know what's over there and y'all don't. NASA is the nosy neighbor for humanity because they're trying to look over these ethereal gates. You see how these little domes shaped like gates? You see how like the everybody got a gate around their house today and they don't want their neighbor looking over their gate. And when your neighbor come poking his nose over your gate, you get mad. This is what the ancestors do with the space program. Our and they're going to war with ancient spirits. See, these ancient spirits don't intend for us to be like nosy neighbors trying to peek over these ethereal barriers. That's cheating. See, here's the thing. If you want to get to know your neighbor, you should go and knock on the motherfucking door like you got some manners. You should knock on the motherfucking door and get to know your neighbor instead of try to peek over the goddamn gate like NASA doing. See, the way our science worked today with trying to understand the afterlife and the, and the, and the worlds beyond this one, we're like nosy fucking neighbors. And like I said, these rockets represent that nose, right? You got, they always shows you, they show you that one neighbor with the nose over the damn fence. Let me see. It's a funny image too. They always show you that shit, like that one neighbor with the nose over the fence. You know what I'm saying? They, they show that shit all the time. See here? See, the nose is what peeks through. When you being nosy, what peeks through the gate is the damn nose. See, if you was looking through a fence, your eyes are seeing what the neighbor backyard look like but if the neighbor come outside, what they'll see is your damn nose poking through their goddamn gate. That's what the ancestors see when they launch them rockets up there. They can't penetrate it, but the ancestors see a little uh, prick coming out. Like, we on the inside of a balloon, and when they try to penetrate through, through the in, from the inside out, the world beyond can see that. The spirits in the worlds beyond ours can see that. Like, look at they nosy asses being nosy again. It ain't for y'all to try to peek through this barrier the way you trying to do it. Why don't you knock on the door and go through the dead, go through the ancestral realm? That's the only way you can get through, NASA. NASA trying to get through to our neighbors, to the worlds beyond this one by fucking piercing their nose through. They trying to reach other worlds beyond this one like a nosy neighbor. And they using a big ass nose and they trying to prick it through that goddamn gate to see what's out there. 
but that ain't the way to do it and that's disrespectful to the ancestors. That's disrespectful to the spirits that move beyond for you to think you can build a goddamn clumsy, goofy ass rocket and make contact with the great spirits of the dead when our doggone ancestors had to go through all kind of rituals to do it. Who are you? Who are you to think you can cheat the system, NASA? See, and they got the name, like I said, with nasal for NASA. See what I'm saying, y'all? That's what's going on on an esoteric level is a spiritual warfare going on. Now, what you think they're going to do if they penetrate that barrier? Go and try to colonize the damn world? That's beyond this one, shit. You think the colonialization going to stop because they found the new world? That's what they was looking for, new worlds to go and colonize. And But guess what, though? They ain't going to be able to go beyond this one. That's why it's up to you to escape this one, because they were given permission to dominate this world. This is kindergarten. This is a test world to activate your spiritual energy so that, guess what? You can blast the fuck off when you leave this place. That's the only way out of here through death, through the ancestral realm. Listen, the only way your grandma could leave this earth is she had to die. Why do these folks think that they so special they can do it another way? That's what y'all need to be asking. Every single person that ever left this earth only did it through the graveyard, through the dead, and that's what the ancestors said that was the only way out. So tell me why these folks think that it's an exception to the rule for them. Why they being nosy neighbors? See, because you can't get over that gate. There's no way you got to go and speak to your ancestors. Then they would give you information on what's going on over there. That's how we, we knew what, what about the worlds beyond. We didn't make no goofy ass rockets. We communicated with the dead and the dead let the living know what it was like on the other side and we drew pictures of it. See, when you in prison, all the prisoners be communicating through the cells, through the walls, y'all. I want you to listen to me now. When them prisoners is locked up, they communicate through the walls. What am I telling you? Look at the picture in front of you. We all in our own cells and we communicate like prisoners through the wall. The root word of prisoner is private, same root word of privy or privacy. Each one of these domes is their own cell that's in privacy but we can be privy to the knowledge beyond this realm through talking through the walls like the prisoners do. Okay? And talking through them walls is talking to the dead. And when we talk to the dead people beyond this world, it's like how the prisoners, they can't, they can't see that prisoner, but they can hear them. They can't see that other prisoner that they talking to, but they can hear them through the wall. And they all passing a message through the wall. So if you got a prisoner way on the end, he got to pass a message to the, through the wall to a prisoner way on the other end. And it's got to go through all them prisoners through the wall. So the prisoners got a very strict code. You been not mess that message up or we're going to beat your ass for not passing the message right. And that's kind of like how we communicated with the dead. But now they got you communicating with Jesus, but he ain't going to say nothing back. The crazy thing, if you start talking to your ancestors and they start talking back, you will get scared. You will get scared. If right now, if Brother Sanchez invited you over his house and said, look, let's do a ritual. I'm going to show you how I get my information. We finna talk to some spirits. The moment you start hearing shit and all that, you will run out and you will fuck it up. You can't see everybody that a spirit ain't going to approach you. They know you ain't ready to hear them yet. Just like a prisoner ain't going to come to that green prisoner and get him to pass no message. 
because they know he's scared. He don't want to get no extra time. See what I'm saying? Only certain people was communicating through them walls, right? And that's how we knew how to make these images on the screen because we was talking to the dead and, and they were saying, well, hey, yeah, we back here. It's a world back here too. Yeah, I know you can't see me, but you can hear me. And I'm letting you know we back here. And this same system was going passed back and back and back and back and back. And it was, and this message was passed back and forth through these walls to all of these different prisoners know that it's another sale beyond mine. Okay? So a prisoner in a cell don't got to see all of them other cells that's on top of it, below it, on the side of it. But it, it knows that they're there because it can hear those prisoners. And you got to open your ears to hear the dead. And that's where ritual will come in when we listening through these ethereal walls to communicate with the dead. And the dead can let you know things that can happen to you before they happen because they they can see our time play out from from see when you go beyond this you got to think about it that this dome is actually the sky and the sky creates time but the people beyond this rail is not on our time they're on their own time and they're able to look into our world and see time turning because they see in the sky they looking down at our sky like a clock they ain't bound to the time inside of our world. They can tell you what the fuck gonna happen. They can make predictions from that viewpoint. You can't because you within it. So each world beyond can tell you something that the other one can't. Now, that's how we was communicating with the dead to get this knowledge. Now the root word of knowledge is the word knows. It's because when we was when we was communicating through these walls, that's a spiritual way of saying we was being nosy. We was being nosy. So they took the science of communicating with the dead, and and instead of and 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 the whole thing about being nosy today is some shallow shit people spying on their neighbors like you see in this image okay we talk about nosy but it, that wasn't the original meaning if you were nosy you were someone who knew a lot nosy is an adjective and it means the same thing today but it got a different context a nosy person still know a lot but they know all the wrong shit how much money that person making how, how many times Beyonce divorced? How many, you know, all that bullshit. But in the ancient day, a nosy person talked with the dead. They did certain breathing rituals with their nose to tap into that other area to, with meditation and ritual. They used their nose to change their, their 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 heartbeat, their frequency, their rhythm from this realm and shift it to the next one to communicate with the dead. And it's very and it's meditation is founded upon breathing. Breathing. That's why I'm talking about the nose. Alright? So they corrupted this science about hold on a second. Hold on a second, y'all. So they corrupted the science about meditation and proper breathing to communicate and visit. See, let me tell you something. <clears throat> In order to astral project, you got to get your breathing right. I did it one time and you got to be relaxed. You got to be in a meditative state and you got to be conscious of your breaths whenever you're trying to astral project and leave the body. So what am I telling you? 
in order to leave this earth in the flesh without dying, you got to change your breathing, which is another way of dying. In other words, listen, when you go to sleep, you go to slip and you slip into these ancestral realms in the dream state. So you may go to a realm where your grandma alive and you may wake up and tell your mama, hey, ma, I was dreaming that me and grandma was at the fairground. And it was grandma and she smelled like grandma and everything. That's because your grandma moved on to a world that's beyond this world, occupying the same space as this one. So you can shift gears, so to speak, shift channels and you can go to sleep or go to slip and you can slip. Basically, you, you slip. when you dream, you basically slip it through the cracks. Now, you changing your breathing and you're shifting your consciousness into the higher version of yourself that already exists in that heavenly plane beyond this one. So listen to me closely. You're already in heaven right now. You already exist in the world beyond this one. The only thing stopping you from having a conscious experience as that higher version of yourself that exists in the plane beyond this one is the fact that this space and time that you're occupying here is sort of magnetizing your consciousness to this reality. So even if you astral project to a dream world, you leave this body here, right? Now, if, if they look at your breathing while you're dreaming, the doctor will tell you that your breathing pattern changes while you dream. Because the reason that that happens is because the body that's in the bed starts to breathe, its, it's breathing pattern starts to be synced to the body that you're shifting your conscious to in a dream world. For example, in a dream body, when you start running and you start taking breaths, they can see that in the bed. They can see you breathing harder in your sleep. Just like if you if you falling off a mountain, when you get the sensation of butterflies in your stomach, you wake up, it wakes you up right when you're about to hit the ground because you can really feel them butterflies in your stomach like you falling, even though you laying in the bed, it's because all of your senses start to be synced to the dream body. And the body that's in the bed, even though it's laying down, its natural function still carry out like uh, sync to what you doing in the dream state. So if you having sex in a dream and you have an orgasm, the body that sleep in the bed, well, we call it a wet dream. It'll react to it because everything is connected. So what I'm telling you is that dream body that you're in when you're sleeping is what you go to when you die. That dream world that you walking around with all your cousins and all them and it's slightly different from this one. That's the holding place. That's where we go to. That's what they call the, the, the place of the dead. Now we go there a lot when we children because we just come into earth. So we still got one foot in that realm and one foot here. Only thing stopping you from having that life that you have in that dream world is that you having it here. So when you die, there's nothing else to magnetize you to this realm. And all of your energy goes to the next uh, most powerful uh, 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 version of yourself. See, the more you go inward, the more dense you exist. And the dense versions of yourself exist in these hellish worlds. And it's what's stopping you from making it to the lighter versions of yourself. And the only way you can exist as those light bodies is to kill the dead bodies that's anchoring you to these heavy worlds. It's like a balloon with a brick on it. When this body die, it's like the balloon getting cut from the brick. 
but the balloon still have something else tied to it that's less lighter than the brick and it won't allow that balloon to go high as it could so even though we cut the balloon off of that brick now we got an apple tied to the balloon so the balloon rolls up just a little bit but it didn't leave quite yet and they call that moving from this world to the next one beyond this one that one gonna capture you into its elements see that dream body is lighter than this body and basically your consciousness is magnetically attracted to the heaviest version of yourself that's why you have a reality in this physical realm when you die there's nothing anchoring you here this body that was anchoring your consciousness to this heavy realm in other words your human body is actually the spirit for this earth realm you are a spirit and when that all that exists is spirit y'all that's all that exists see the phys you got to start looking at the physical reality or the solid world as lids for the soul which is infinite energy when you say solid you're saying soul lid our soul is infinite energy that manifests itself in these different lids or different solid worlds but what it is it, it has no dimensions or a solid state in order for your soul to have definition and experience it have to define itself in the body because outside of the body it exists as all with no definition so this is this is the beauty of every everybody being infinite energy compressed into form and dimension and because of that compression you exist in an infinite amount of copies some copies are lighter than the other ones so if you think about light because that's all we are light exists from the part of uh, radiance dense to least dense think of a flashlight the closer you go to the light source the more brighter the light is and the further away you go from it the less light it is that's what you are that's what this entire earth cosmos is when you go toward the north pole is like going toward the flashlight and the further away you go from it the light is more subtle is more lighter less brighter bright is dense and the closer you are to the pole the more dense the world is the more kindergarten the people are we call it the more hellish right because that's kindergarten these worlds that's closer to the pole are more chaotic because they are there to to kindle your flame in other words when you born a doctor slap you on the ass kind of to give you a push get everything flowing get the juices going like welcome to life wake up you're, you're now born into this world to kind of activate your senses here on a macrocosmic level for you to go to higher levels you got to go to lower levels just like for a slingshot to shoot a rock far you got to pull it back far see the further you pull back a boomerang the farther it'll go and that's what this world is about see this world we live in the worlds that's closer to the, the center are more chaotic you know why ain't a kindergarten class more chaotic than a 12th grade class see when you go to the high school students they more quiet they're more organized the bell system 
they the teacher got the don't have to yell at them as much. But when you go to the kindergarten classes, the teacher got to constantly yell. It's a lot of fighting. The fucking kindergarten students are throwing paper and they're hard they're, because it's kindergarten. They're they're young. So the world we're born into, all right. The reason it's so chaotic is because it's kindergarten. Okay? But you got to go through these chaotic realms to reach the universities, to reach the more organized realms, right? And it's called kindergarten because it's there to kindle the flame of the young mind. Kindergarten is to activate the learning process. That's why it's called kindergarten. It's a garden of candles or candle garden. Each one of us is a candle. And when we start the learning process, your candle is lit. Your flame is lit. Okay? Kindergarten ain't necessarily for you to learn anything but how to learn. It's there to activate the learning process. That's why it's called Kindle Garden. Kindling the flame. And now that we get you burning, we can start putting gas on that fire. First grade, second grade, third grade, blowing you up to finally you're a burning, roaring volcano, you know, and you're not a little candle. That's the, that's the, the light bulb turning on. And it starts as a candle and it blows up to a bomb. It's a light bulb. Remember, knowledge is power or the, the, the light bulb represent the expansion of consciousness. And that's what our cosmos is. It's reacting to your level of consciousness and it's going to put you in the grade you belong. So we are all in kindergarten right now. Now, let's get back to some of the deeper. I got a lot of things to go over. I want to be too. I want to really talk about this NASA and nasal, the nose or the Norse cosmos. See, the nose represent the North Pole. And see, at the center of everything is a reciprocating hyper hyperboloid. Now, don't let them big words confuse you, okay? That just means contraction and expansion. It's the heart of all things. Now think about your heart. Ain't it contracting and expansion and expanding? You call it a heartbeat. That's at the center of your chest. Now look at what's at the center of your face. It's called a nose. And it's like a heartbeat because it's breathing in and out. And it goes back to say that at the center of everything is a breather or an in and outer. That's all. I'm simplifying it for you. Think of a highway system. You got uh, on an interstate, you got cars going one way and cars going the other way, in and out, up and down, Jacob's Ladder. That's what's happening at the north. So the north is the nose of the earth where people are entering hell and exiting hell or inhaling and exhaling it looks similar to this see this is why the people who knew this knowledge was called the Gnostics now think about what I just said new knowledge Gnostic all dealing with the nose like I said you got to go down to go up. And that's what the images in front of you represent. I don't want to talk too much. So I'm going to use these collages to talk for me. And I'm going to need for you to just open up that third eye for me. All right. So like I said, Jesus had to go down to go up. He went to hell before we went to heaven. And it happened on Mount Calvary. Now, if you look in the bottom left corner, it, that's called a ripple effect. When you throw a rock in the water, you're going to always get a Mount Calvary, right? Or a Hershey's Kisses in the middle. It's a law of nature that when something go down, something got to come up. You hear me? 
When some go down, some got to come up. When a seed go down, a tree come up. When a rock go down in a water, a mountain of water comes up out where the rock went down. And that right there is a Hershey's kiss. That's how they get the shape for Hershey's kisses by studying a ripple effect, people. That's why you like Hershey kiss so much. It's the shape of it. See, it's just regular chocolate, but it's the shape of it that make it feel good in your mouth. It's the sacred geometry because you, everything about you are familiar with these shapes. It's called a tear because it's a tear. When that rock hit the water, it rips through the surface and it tears the water. And when it tears the water, it tears the water and it creates tears. If you look at the drips, they are tears or tears. Tears are tears of water or pillars. See, let me break some down to y'all. The eyes are the two thieves, but those two eyes are also equivalent to the two pillars of water. Now, you got to think about something, people. What is an eye? What is a human eye? A human eye is a piled up water ball. Duh. I mean, they've been teaching you that all your life that your eyes is water. But guess what though? Let me show you something. Excuse me, check this out. Now I'm about to go deep and blow you away. They gave you this. They told you you live on this when it's bullshit, they flip you inside out and I'm trying to reverse it and flip you back around. You don't live on a ball earth, but guess what though? Your eyes are ball earths. People, the only way water can hold the shape of a ball in nature is the human eye. I repeat, there's only one way in nature that you will ever see water hold the shape of a ball and that's the human eyeball the human eyeball is a pile of water or a pillar of water in between a nose now listen your nose is in between your eyes and your nose represent dry land in between water. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. Look at the picture in front of you and listen to what I'm telling you. The nose in the middle of your face represent where wind is coming in and out. Your nose is dry land in between two pillars of water that we call eyeballs. And that's how you get Moses splitting the sea. It's really noses splitting the eyes. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. They gave you Moses splitting the sea, but it's really noses splitting the vision. Or what you see with. If you want to call your eyes seas or seers, then yes, noses splits the sea or the seers or Moses splits the sea when it's really noses splits the sea the seers the nose is the dry land that separates those pillars of water that we call eyes now listen the nose inhales and exhales 
and look at the position of Moses. See, when you look at the sky and the ground, that represents heaven and hell. Right there in this image, heaven and hell. It represents inhaling and exhaling because in hell is being on the ground. Exiting hell is the sky. So this is literally the human nose and why we say that we inhale and exhale. Okay? So Moses represent noses, sky and ground, inhale and exhale in between the two eyes. We are the gods, y'all, that's traveling in and out of these different uh, realms of existence. Because when you look at Moses in this image, what you're really looking at is, excuse me, we ain't ready for this yet. I'm going to teach y'all about this later. This is called elasticity. This is what the North Pole is. It's a DNA connection where they told you Jesus made the blind man see with spit. When you go to the North Pole, you, you, you begin to see with the spiritual eyes. And it's because they use the word spit because spit represent plasma or elasticity. In other words, here go the North Pole right here. When you talk about liquid, the sky is a plasma type liquid that is like nothing on earth. It's the least dense kind of liquid. They call it the primordial water and is very elastic. Okay? What connects our world to other worlds above us and below us like a shish kebab is a pole. But that pole is literally the birthplace of all DNA. And it's a neutral DNA strand that they call Jacob's Ladder. At the middle of every cell is the DNA symbol. And that's just telling you that the North Pole, this is DNA. But DNA is plasma. And plasma is revered because of its elastic properties. It's able to connect all of the different organisms in the body together with a fluid-like circuitry system. Okay? The veins are made of plasma. It's the river system of the human body. It connects all the organs. And they are able to communicate with each other through this vein system. So if I cut a certain vein, it breaks off the communication cord from certain organs that was communicating through that line system. So I cut a certain vein and now that liver can't communicate with the heart and it start acting funny. So the vein system is where it's transmitting electrical current that they call plasma. And they revere it because it's stretched throughout the body starting from the heart where all the veins are connected to the heart and they're stretched all the way out to the tips of the fingers and the tips of the toes and your veins end as nails. People listen to me, this may seem boring but I'm finna blow you away. Did you know that all of the veins in your body turn into the hard fingernails? Yes, your fingernails and toenails are made out of plasma just like your veins and if you look at your fingernails and toenails they are motherfucking shaped just like the plasma domes at the ends of the earth people listen to me at the end of the earth are these dome shaped fingernail shaped clear barriers and at the ends of the human are these dome shaped clear barriers that we call nails and why do we call them nails at the end of your body? Let me show you why. Let me show you why. This is why we call them nails, y'all. Because the nails was at the end of Jesus' hands. They dealing with the human body. Your nervous system is the Christ body. It's the electrical discharge that's coming from your heart. That's what is transmitted through the dream state. That is what you're perceiving this moment through. That is you. 
not the body. That's what's controlling the body. This elect, this vein system that's striking from the heart. The heart is an electrical discharge coming from the center, and it ends at the nails of the human. Did y'all hear me? That the, Listen to what I'm telling you, people, once again. I'm going to repeat myself for the slow people. Your Christ body ends at the nails. Do you get it now? Christ ended his life at the goddamn nails. Being they, they, they talking a, a dual language to you. What do you think your nails is? Don't you know what will happen if I peel off one of your nails? You can bleed the death just from that. Did you know that? Because it's a vein ending right there. In other words, your heart is bleeding out an electromagnetic uh, uh, current that we call circulating plasma or what they call blood, which is your electrical frequency. And it's pumping it all the way to the edges of your body. And it, your nails, energy comes out of your nails and it comes around your body like this. Energy is coming out of your fingertips, out of your head, and out of your feet. And all of the exits of the energy, the way it exits the body, is through these areas where the nails are. See, Jesus exited the earth with the nails. You say, Brother Sanchez, what is the nail? The nail is the North Pole. It literally looks like a nail. See, the, everything we call a nail shape the same way. Let me show you. Here go a nail right here. The North Pole is a nail that's stuck in the dirt. Now we use a terminology where we say the nail in the coffin. I'm giving you the literal nail in the coffin right now. If you're looking at this image, you're looking at where we get that, that term from. The North Pole sky vault is connecting the spiritual realm to this physical realm. This physical realm is hell, a dense realm, a coffin realm. We're literally walking inside of a damn casket. This world we live in is a casket. Don't this shape like a casket? Our world shaped like a coffin. But in the middle of our world is a pole that's shaped like a nail. So when we say the nail in the coffin, this is what we're talking about right here. I did a whole documentary called The Nail in the Coffin. When you say eternal, you're saying the ether nail. The ether nail became the word eternal. This nail is what keeps our reality stuck together, just like the nails in your house. If you move this North Pole, our whole world will fall apart. So that's why I'm showing y'all this. Now check this out, because we got to get back with NASA, nasal, and all that. That nail is an elastic plasma pole, right? It's, it's, it stretches up. It's called Jacob's Ladder because you can see, right? And this may be nasty, but spit is the closest thing to plasma uh, that the human body can produce. So if you don't want to just, you know, take no plasma from your damn veins, you don't have to use plasma. You can do experiments with your spit. All right. You really need to start studying your spit because spit is just like plasma. It has elastic properties, meaning if I spit on my hand and I pull my hand apart, you're going to get a stretchy line like you see there. Water ain't like that. See, these liquids have different levels of elasticity. 
plasma is the most elastic fluid on earth and they say that the most plasma is at the North Pole. Check this out. This is what the North Pole is. This is what the North Pole is. All right. It's a, a pole that's connecting two worlds. Now, if you look at this thing, it's, 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 it's a connect the dot type system. It's literally elasticity is about connecting the dots and that's where we get the ball and chain from. Did you know that? If you look at this thing, you got a ball line, ball line, ball line, ball line. It's elastic properties is called connect the dots. Ball and chain. So I'm showing you with sacred geometry, the foundations of science. Man had to see the concept before he can manifest it. And there's little things in our reality that we overlook because the subconscious mind is so familiar with it that we, we consciously produce it with the conscious mind. So we may consciously manufacture a car because subconsciously we know how the human body is manufactured if that makes sense to you. you. We consciously manufacture something called a camera because subconsciously we know how the human eye operates, if that makes sense to you. All right, now listen to what I'm saying. We consciously manufacture rockets because we understand how the human knows operate on an esoteric level. Now this is where we get deep. See, this is why I'm telling you NASA is the root word of nasal, right? Because what's going on with NASA is, like I showed you in, excuse me. See, like I'm showing you in this image right here, every time they say they go into space and they come back to Earth, they are re-solidifying their programming. And they got to keep on doing that, just like the nose got to keep breathing to stay alive. Now, does it make sense to y'all? Now, to the regular person, they may say, well, that's crazy. Well, it make perfect sense. Their programming is based upon belief. And I don't know if you know this, but belief is something you have to keep alive. So when you have a program based upon a belief system and you got to keep that belief alive, then that belief has to be able to breathe. So the belief system that foundates world uh, uh, power is literally uh, constantly reinforced by a giant nose because beliefs have to be able to breathe. Now, every time they launch that rocket up there and come back, it strengthens their belief system to the people that believe it. Just like every time you inhale and exhale, it strengthens your body. It's good for your blood system. It's good, inhaling and exhaling is good for you. So they literally have to enter and exit hell to strengthen their belief system. Just like Jesus had to enter and exit hell to strengthen his belief system for, for, for it to be a such thing as Christianity. Think about it. If Jesus wouldn't have never entered and exited hell, he wouldn't have been the God. If NASA wouldn't have never launched a rocket up there and came back to Earth, people wouldn't be worshipping them either. It's the same esoteric programming, and I'm just trying to free your mind. Don't you know if Christ was not risen, the resurrection is the foundation of the Christian faith. Jesus 
entering hell and exiting hell or leaving and, and coming back to the earth. Okay? The Christian faith is founded upon Jesus leaving the earth and coming back to the earth. You need to listen to what I'm saying and look at the image on the screen. I'm doing this for a reason. You may say you don't believe in Jesus, but I got news for you. You still believe in Jesus if you believe in the space programming. Because your faith is based upon a man leaving the earth and coming back to the earth. Just like Jesus. I'm telling you that the space programming is Christianity. It's the same damn programming in different forms for different generations. So in order for a belief to live, that belief has to be able to breathe. And breathing is something that's a consistent action. And if you look at the space program, they use their giant nostrils and they're so consistent. They're consistently launching rockets in, in and out of the, the earth or so they say in and out of the earth. But the, the rockets are making a huge arch. But what they're esoterically telling you is a sine wave. Add all the arches together, people. Add them, add them together. Add the arches together. Arch plus arch plus arch plus arch equals sine wave. Let me show you. When they're sending that rocket up to the heavens, they're, they're strengthening their bond. It's their signature. When they're sending, they're sending a wave up into the minds of humanity. So let me show you something. When they launch them rockets, the rockets are just making an arch. And they plummet it back to earth. And they make another arch and plummet back to earth. So what they giving you for the rockets, excuse me, I'm gonna move our nosy neighbor. What they giving you for the rockets is the sine wave. Each lunch is an arch. But this is what breathing is. When you breathing, this is what it looked like under uh, in a hospital when you breathing. See, guess what would happen if NASA stopped launching rockets? People will forget about space. They'll forget about the space programming. It'll just go away because it ain't the truth. The truth is the only thing that can live for eternity. But belief system got to constantly have CPR because they dead without man's interference because nature ain't got no part in the lie. So a belief system is like a dead body that somebody got to constantly be breathing life into, like CPR. And that's why they got to constantly launch rockets, man. It's, it's a lot of work. See, when you tell a lie, it's a lot of work to keep it going. If they stop showing you all of these globes at the beginning of the movies and delete all of these globes everywhere and stop launching these rockets, guess what? The space program will die because it ain't real. That ain't, that ain't the same, you know, that ain't how the truth operates. You can't stop the truth no matter how much you ignore it. No matter how much somebody promote the truth or don't promote the truth, it won't die. But a lie is different because a lie is the root word of belief. When you being lied to, you are a believer. That's why when you say believer, you're saying be lie verb. You the one that's being lied to. And they have to constantly reinforce the lie. Think about it, man. 
Pastor got to have church every Sunday. He got to have church every Sunday and sometimes through the weekday because people will lose faith. People will turn their back on Jesus. People will say, man, fuck this God that's allowing me to go through all this trouble. That's allowing these children to have AIDS and these children to go to war and allowing these children to suffer. For they can even say mama, dad, they got diseases in certain country. A lot of Christians lose, or, or lose faith. So what happened is every Sunday, the pastor got to constantly breathe life into this dead ass God. And it's happening with NASA too. They got to consistently launch these rockets up there to breathe life into this dead ass lie. That's why the rocket shaped like a nose, man. Because this is the nose of they big old spiritual monster that they created in the minds of all of you believers. All of you, you believers believe in this giant Megatron monster that rules over you. And you hope and pray in this God. This God comes this God leaves the earth and comes to the earth to relay messages to his believers. And that plays out on an esoteric level through NASA. So the Christian church is promoting uh, Jesus, right? Because when I'm telling you that NASA is a Christian program and what I want you to pay attention to is Jesus. Hey, everyone that's sending in super chats, I want to thank you all. And I'm going to take a, a lot of time at the end of this and call out those super chats. And just because you guys been so good in your donations, I'm going to continue this series tonight. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to continue it tonight because I got so much to share for you. So thank you all for the donations. Hey, keep them coming. Appreciate the support. We're going to keep the show going. And, and, and listen, if you don't mind, uh, I'll use this to take a one minute break. Get me something to drink real quick. I've been talking for an hour and a half. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to sink some more NASA esoteric program, NASA space programming to religious programming to see that is one big game being played on different people based upon a level of consciousness. You got people call themselves skeptics and atheists and they don't deal with mythology, beliefs and religions. They deal with science, but they don't know that science is a religion today. And science is founded upon the same heliocentric religion. Excuse me. Today's science is founded upon the same concepts that built the medieval world. It's just in a different form. The medieval world was founded upon concepts about men that was leaving the earth and coming back to the earth with messages. And these men were worshipped because they were resurrected, started from Zeus because Jesus wasn't the first one. Okay. Now, what you got to realize is the worship of these men who were called messengers of Messiahs were forced upon the people because the message that these Messiahs had didn't come from nature. Just like the message NASA got ain't coming from Mother Nature. Mother Nature didn't tell you nothing about no diamond planets. NASA did. Mother Nature didn't tell you nothing but that you on an infinite plane and all of the shit your ancestors said was what Mother Nature told you. And it's contrary to what NASA says. So let me reach my point and I'm going to take a break after I reach this one point here. You listen to man or your ancestors. Your ancestors had the truth, what I'm giving you now. So, in medieval times, people started listening to powerful men. 
instead of the, the, the truth that we was passing along orally. And we made a conscious decision not to follow the truth because it was more popular to follow the powerful men like it is today. That was happening a long time ago. When you know the truth for so long, it gets boring. And we have something called paradigm shifts where our ancestors agree to forget the truth so they can have fun. That may sound stupid to y'all, but that's literally why we go through paradigm shifts. Okay? We see the thing about knowledge is it's two swords. You got to know how not to know too. So whenever humanity start knowing too much, it gets boring. We dumb ourselves down on purpose because whenever we start knowing everything, we start forgetting how not to know. And since humanity is omniscient and, and has an infinite connection to just like uh, the source because we are made in the image of the source, we have to maintain our omniscient status as well. Meaning the human being can never be this or that. It has to remain everything. So the moment the human being just become this creature that, that simply just knows it all, we have a consciousness shift or a paradigm shift where we start dumbing ourselves down on purpose. Because in our attempts to know everything, we forget how not to know everything. And it's like a pendulum. It's like tick-tock, tick-tock. They call it uh, descending time and ascending time. This is yin and yang, night and day, dark ages and light ages. We are entering a light age now where we saying, okay, we've been dumb for 8,000 years. This shit is getting boring. Let's go back to knowing again. And that's what's happening right now. Now, once we have another 10,000 years or so of knowing, guess what? That shit going to get boring. And we're going to go back to dumbing it down again. Because these are the two states we can exist in. It's like ping pong. You have to know both sides of the coin. See, the fool knows something that the genius don't know. And that's how to be a fool. So the genius don't know everything. And the crazy thing about God, God has to know everything. Otherwise, God loses its omniscient status. So the moment, in order to know everything, you got to also know how not to know. So we enter these dark ages where we cloak ourselves in ignorance so we can experience bliss. It is during these times where we start to experience the creation creation in bliss and ignorance then you know like i said it's like a sine wave the the consciousness of humanity is like a sine wave it goes up and down up and down up and down everything moves like a sine wave you get up and down up and down go to sleep wake up go to sleep wake up everything is a sine wave and the reason I keep bringing up that because sine wave is, excuse me, sine wave is sinus wave. The sinus wave starts from the nose, which is the point of singularity, Rudolph, with your red nose behind. Okay? So the nose is the noose, it's the connection point. The nose is the news. See, when we go to the North Pole, it's like opening up a, a, a cosmic newspaper. They call it the Book of Life. You go to the North Pole and all the secrets of reality will be unlocked in your DNA. Because what you're going to see when you get there is going to give you an aha moment that I could never give you with my words. When you see what is happening at the North Pole, I, it, it'll be the equivalent of listening to a gazillion Brother Sanchez lectures 
in one second. You will get that much knowledge in one second. And that's why they stop people from going to the North Pole. You can go everywhere else. You can go to Egypt. You can go to Mecca. And you can go to all of these places where they got these dumb gods dumbing you down. But you can't go to where the compass is telling you to go. See, because where them compass is pointing at is the nose. When you get to the North Pole, you're going to see all of what's creating our world piling up. <laughs> and you're going to realize what you in inside of a TV screen. You inside of a projected world. Walking back to the North Pole is walking back to the, the nose that is breathing out this country's world. This world, the ground, you, this is a breath of the creator. Night and day is inhale and exhale coming from the North Pole, which is the nose of the earth, y'all. If you look at the bottom left corner, that's sun and moon going around the pole. That's how the earth breathes. When the sun and moon go around that pole, night and day, night and day, inhale, exhale, inhale, it's going around, uh, it is built, it's made the same way we made. We breathe in and out, but on, on another level, the sun and moon is going around the pole and it's causing contraction and expansion throughout the earth. Because when daytime, whenever it's daytime, the atmosphere is expanded. And whenever it's nighttime, everything is contracted. I don't know if y'all knew that. I, I hope I didn't get that backwards. Yeah, nighttime is contract contractions because the nighttime is dealing with the feminine, the moon, which have contractions during pregnancy. And the sun is the male, the discharge, which is expansion. So daytime is uh, exhale, nighttime is inhale. Hope that makes sense. Night is hell, daytime, sunshine, out of hell, right? Okay, so, so, uh, inhale can also be seen as a lot of different ways what we was yet to get into. I think I'll get into on the next one because inhale, we're going to be sinking to a lot of you see, I got all these collages to go over, and, and, and I, didn't, I didn't go over all of them. We definitely got to do that. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a talk about NASA before we go. Inhale and exhale, I wanted to break it down to pregnancy here. All right. The first God to rep to represent the Taurus field to the Yorubans was called a Nazi, the spider, a Nazi. And the word Nazi is the word NASA today. And again, uh, the sun and moon can be seen as the eyes of the earth, but they, what I want you to look at them uh, today as the nostrils of the earth because this pattern can be seen in micro and macro right the earth is made just like the human but you got to learn how to see it the four elements are the four extensions that the earth used to manipulate this reality so what is doing the manipulation what you looking at is an electromagnetic energy field and that's the fourth state of matter is not solid liquid or gas this box is made out of plasma now solid liquid and gas exists inside of the let me show you solid liquid gas exists in this hollow area like a donut so if you could think of our reality you got the sky up here and the, the, everything in between right here. You got the trees coming up from the ground. You got, you know, just like we show you with the flat earth model, it looked like a donut. It looked like this right here. This is our world. And when we go to the middle, we go to the pole and we see it like this. 
But what I'm telling you is that pole is a plasma pole. It would look like lightning if we went there. And it'll be a very uh, weathery place, so to speak. It'll be tolerable, but it'll be like being in a, like a thunderstorm, I, I imagine. Because this is where the elements are breaking down. So it'll literally be like going to an energy generator. You will hear that om. The closer you get to the North Pole. Now, what we got to realize is, uh, hold on a second, because I don't want to get too far gone. I said I'm going to take a break, but I don't want to take the break yet. I want to make a point first. Thank you all again for, for your patience as well. Okay, so... um. All right. Well, what what was I finna say? Damn it. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. I want y'all to start looking at the sun and moon as nostrils, nostrils, right? Because check this out. They a lot of people's uh, link childbirth to the sun. All right, childbirth is linked to the sun, the shining sun. Right, so a people, a lot of people say souls enter the earth through the sun, and they exit the earth through the moon. Now go back to what I said about day and night, inhale and exhale. Right, if the sun and moon are the nostrils of the earth, what do your nostrils do? Your nostrils inhale and exhale wind, but they do it in unison. I'm telling you that the earth d does the same thing, but not in un but well, yeah, in unison, but each nostril is different. Like, so the sun is a nostril that allow the earth to spit wind out, and the moon sucks in wind. So that's how the earth's nostrils work. That's how the earth's earth breathes one of the earth nostrils breathes out wind and one of the earth nostrils sucks in wind and it recycles its that wind through itself and while the earth do that we're able to breathe that wind in our nostrils and suck it just like a, a, a river flowing water and we can go up to that river with our straws and get us some water from that river. But if it stop flowing, we won't get no water from that river. It'll dry up. So we're stirring up the this this gaseous atmosphere so that we can breathe. It's the ether or the breather. It's a micro macro action. See what am I telling you? As the earth breathe, you can breathe. As the wind circulate your blood can circulate because another name for blood is etheric wind your blood is your electrical frequency it's an electrical circulation and it flows through the body like wind as you breathe in and out you're winding up the blood it's a cog and wheel type of effect to where if I spin one wheel the other one that's connected to that is going to spin. So the earth is this, the earth is a huge spinning wheel. And since we're little bitty wheels that's connected to the earth, it's spinning our wheels. As the earth breathes and circulates wind through the, around the earth, you breathe and circulate blood through your body because you're pulling from what the earth doing. If that makes sense. So the earth is constantly stirring up the elements. And a product of that is the air you, the very air you breathe. Hold on a second.
So, so remember that the nose is the breather. And if you take the BR off, it's the ether. Your nose is what connects you to the ether. The ether is the breather. That's why I'm showing you this. I'm showing you this because the ether that, that houses all of the elements is the breather. It circulates the elements. All of the elements are inside of this little hollow area. So our world shaped like a donut. All of the physical elements sit in this little hollow mold right here. The atmosphere, the water, and all that inside of here. And if you was looking at our world, it'll look like a, a blue, green, brown donut suspended in darkness. Like they show you the globe suspended in darkness. But what they ain't telling you is what you can't see is a magnetic barrier around that donut was giving it its shape. Like, like cookie dough in a cookie mold. Our reality shapes like a donut because it sits in, inside of a box, in a, in a magnetic box that you see here. This is an invisible barrier. And it's moving because it's a vibrational barrier. Now, what's inside of it is all the elements. And since the barriers of our reality is in motion, the elements within the barrier is, with, is in motion. So when you go outside, the wind is moving. The sky, the clouds is moving. The ocean is in motion because the barriers of our reality is, is in motion as you can see here. So our reality sit inside of here and the walls that house the elements are moving. So when the, when the ocean water hit up against this wall, it pushes it back to the center. And when the ocean water reaches this center little pole, it pushes it back to the wall. And from our reality, we call it ocean current. You see how the ocean water is moving back and forth, back and forth? That's because the outer wall of the earth is pushing the ocean water to the inner pole and the inner pole is pushing it back to the wall and they just keep pushing it and we keep seeing it as the ocean current. So as it's pushing and pulling, it's also spinning around too. Isn't this how we look at the ocean water? Because all of the elements is being moved and stirred by the barrier that they don't want us to be able to see. That's why you can't travel to the edges of the map. They balled it up. They balled up the dang old map into the globe to keep you from traveling to the edges that really exist. But we still use flat maps. Now listen, I'm gonna take a break real quick. So think about this, right? The sun and moon are, are, are made of the elements as well. They are just less dense forms of the elements. And they are being stirred up by the ether too. That's why they going around too. So we our reality is a spinning donut. That's why I keep showing you the electromagnetic energy field. It looks like this. This is our world. Now, now when I get back, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in with the nose and NASA with the gnosis. Because what we're doing right now is we're being nosy. We're trying to peek over into the world beyond ours. But what we're doing, we're doing it the right way. We're doing critical thinking, going within. We're respecting our ancestors and we're going through the dead to unlock the secrets. We're getting proper breathing techniques, meditation, harnessing the, the energy of the nose because the nose is the most important thing on the body when it comes to meditation and leaving the earth. Did you hear me? Your, the human nose, your, your, your breathing, your rhythm have to be right. 
for you to astral project and travel the other planes of existence and leave the body. So they are giving you a giant nose to leave the earth because they're corrupting the ancient science and turn it into a new age religion where you don't really leave the earth, you just believe in them. So in the future, people will be trapped here. They won't be aware of the worlds beyond this one because the people giving them this space program is, be, is saying we're, the no, we're acting as your nose and you're forfeiting your right to travel because you're being space programmed. They're controlling space. Let me tell you some people, there's a movie called Jumpers. You need to go watch it. In the movie, they was trying to stop humans from time traveling. But there was a group of humans who were still traveling to different worlds and different years. And they had a time traveling police agency to go and arrest jumpers because they was jumping in between these different realms. The space program is about controlling travel. The government is about controlling travel. They don't want you to be able to go. They want to control where you able to go. And what I'm telling you is what they're, the, the, what, what travel they trying to restrict is astral projection. They want everybody trapped in this kindergarten dense world. If everybody was in tune with our original spirituality and we was meditating, astral projecting, don't you know we'll be warping out of this place, going to meet up with the ancestors? They won't have nobody to enslave. They'll have to enslave each other. They don't know how to leave this place. Just because they don't respect meditation and the right way to leave this place, they want to do it with a rocket and go against the ancient sciences that say you got to breathe right and meditate right to leave the earth. And they want to make a big old nose and try to cheat the shit and build a heaven here by creating a space program and, 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 and indoctrinating the children so they can build a heaven in this kindergarten realm. These people don't want to move beyond. They want to keep reincarnating here because they don't like nature's way of a uh, spiritual system, so they created their own. See, nature created a spiritual system through meditation and through life and death, through breathing. All right, see, because if you don't lead a body while you alive consciously and meditate and get your breathing right, because a lot of ancients, they would meditate and where they would go in meditation would be so heavenly, they'll just, they won't come back to their body. So you see a lot of bodies around the earth that are uh, stuck in the mummified position where they was meditating. Scientists don't know how to explain it. A lot of ancient bodies that they find, the people died in a meditating position. And what I'm telling you is the story of Enoch is, is real. A lot of our ancestors was just meditating out of this, this world into the next one. And, and, and to the people that were stuck here, it looked like they died. But they really didn't die. They moved to the world beyond this one to a greater version of themselves. So they would meditate to a better uh, reality and they would decide to stay there. They would make a conscious decision in that lucid experience that I'm not coming back to my body. And people do that to this day. And scientists say, where he died in his sleep because he had a cardiac arrest. A lot of people that die in their sleep today, they found heaven, man, and they just slept up. They just stayed there. They decided not to wake back up here. They found the way out through breathing. Okay, that happens to this day. A lot of people go to sleep, and sometimes they may meet uh, certain spirits on the other world that ask them in a dream. Do you want to stay in this world? And if they say, yeah, 
it play out to us like they died in their sleep, but they re didn't really die. To them, they didn't really die. They still damn living. They, they just in a new experience. Like we call it death, but the person that's dying don't experience as death. They just open up some new eyes. Like when you dream. So whether you make a conscious decision to meditate and ask to project out of this place like that, or if you decide, okay, I'm gonna just live out my life and whenever I die, I'll just die, I'll exit that way. Either way, it's breathing that allow us to escape, okay? It's breathing that enters the soul and exits the soul. That's why we call it inhale and exhale. So when we meditate, once you can see what happens during meditation, why breathing is so important is you exist on the world in, in a realm beyond this one. You're walking around right now on autopilot. Until your consciousness shift in that body, you just on autopilot. Your body carrying out all the decisions you would make on that other realm. In other words, when you go to sleep and you dreaming, you always in the middle of the dream and you know who you is in the dream. You know what city you live at in that dream world. You know everything about, don't nobody got to tell you when you dreaming, hey dude, you fell asleep and you dreaming and this is your mama and this is your new girlfriend in this dream world. You know all of that because you exist already in that place. But you walking around right now doing something in that higher world. You on autopilot. Why you experience this avatar of this version of you. Now check this out. Um, damn it, I was finna make a... Oh yeah, that's what I was finna say. See? When you meditate, you're trying to sync this body with the higher body. So there's another body that exists beyond this plane of existence, just like you see in the image. You exist in all of these realms. You're on autopilot, waiting to experience that version of yourself like a dream, how you do in a dream. Now, what I was going to say was, Uh, what I was going to say was, uh, hold on. Excuse me. Yeah, what I was going to say was, um, when you meditating, you're trying to see what happens is when you close your eyes and you can sync the way you breathing in this plane of existence to your higher self, then you will leave this consciousness and enter that realm. When people meditating, they leaving this body, they leaving the body in this realm and they experiencing their reality in the world beyond this one. People who can meditate good are able to go all the way out and have multiple realities and multiple realms because they able to shift their consciousness to each of those different avatars that exist. You exist as in all of these different realms. In order for you to shift your consciousness from one realm to the next, you got to sink your breathing to that version of you in that realm. Each version of you has its own individual heartbeat and own breathing rhythm based upon its being on its own different time system under a own, its own different sun and moon. The further out you go, the breathing is, is bigger. You take longer inhales and exhales. So the further out you go, and you assume those bodies, when you inhale and exhale, is very deep, like it's the closer in you go, the shorter breaths you take. So when you meditating, when they talk about breathing, 
you're trying to sink your breathing to whichever realm, whichever version uh, you, you, you're trying to go to. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. But the moment your heartbeat in this realm sinks up with your heartbeat in another realm that uh, exists beyond this one, the version uh, of you in this reality will die because you've awakened to your higher self and it counts. <laughs> It cancels out this version, and they got a movie called Jet Li, the one that'll show you what I'm what I'm saying. So, people that die are only awakening to their higher self. The moment you do it, you're gonna drop dead. That heart gonna stop beating because now it's synced to to the other version, and it's beating on another rail. You shift that electrical consciousness of that Christ consciousness of what you are to a whole nother body and another reality beyond this one. When that happened, your heart stopped beating in this realm and it, 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 now you're, it, you're having a conscious experience in that other realm. See, the thing is this. Your heartbeat represents the electrical energy, the energy that you use to perceive reality with. When you're no longer perceiving this reality, your heart is beating somewhere else perceiving that reality. And it's also possible to, to perceive these realities uh, in, in synchronicity. You do that during a lucid dream. During a lucid dream, you ain't dead, but you're asleep, and sleep is a miniature form of death. Now, when you lucid dreaming, you plan with death. That's why a lot of people say, that's dangerous, don't do that. But they just trying to scare you. But I will say this, people that lucid dream and astral project, they are playing with death, meaning you can get trapped in those realms, meaning Man, you ain't gonna wanna leave some of these realms. You ain't gonna wanna leave them. Some of them better than here. Certain spirits will allow you into certain realms that you will get attached to. And the more you get attached to these higher realms, you die in this world. So a lot of awakened people die young. Look at Bruce Lee. Look at, look at these, these young gurus that die. Bob Marley, a lot of people that was dealing with the sciences, they die young. The, at some point, a spirit will will offer you a way out in a dream state or something. And enlightened people going to say, hell yeah, I want to go. So we die young. Spirits don't offer that to people who are ignorant. They let them live out their lives and figure it out. But at some point, you enlightened people may get approached in a dream by a spirit and uh, you know it's crazy because a lot of people that die in their sleep die with a smile and you you know that some spirit approached them in that crossroad say hey you want to stay here man and they said hell yeah now check this out right Because, oh, matter of fact, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to come back and give y'all another hour of, of nothing but jewels and good information. All right? And, and then we'll have a Q&A later, and I'm going to keep this series going. Hit the like button, hit the share button, and uh, I'm going to take a quick break.
our eyes are balls. And in the middle of that ball is a point called a pupil. And these two pupils focus on one thing, but that ball converges the uh, 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 horizon line to a point. If your eyes were like Cyclops, one line in, in, in your face, it wouldn't converge to a point. But since you have an eyeball and you live on an earth plane, the horizon converge into a point. This is how we see. And since they don't teach us how we see, they trick us with the globe and tell you that that's curvature up there when it's really convergence. It's convergence. You can't see forever, brother, sister. You need binoculars. It ain't hidden behind curvature. It's convergence. And this is what Moses splitting the sea is all about because to split the sea is just what I'm teaching you how you see you see split with two eyes that put two images together and make one this is science that show you the water inside of your eyes being split by the nose or the wind which is the dry land this is human body. These other pan African electric, no matter what the fuck, more all along working for the fucking same entity. I mean, you high ranking, they ain't gonna get this. Yeah, what this is showing you right here is the Jesuits are hiding convergence like I told you earlier. They're calling it curvature. This is the secret of the space program. This is how they create the matrix of curvature in your mind because you don't know how your eyes work. That's why I taught you how your eyes work earlier. Let's look at this some more and then I'll be back to teach y'all some more. This. spirituality African implants working for the fucking United Nations now Marcus Garvin military wore the Jesuit cross here go a color picture he got the same goddamn hat on that Queen Elizabeth wear Marcus Garvey had an army. Who the fuck you think was funding his side of the war for his army? Wake the hell up, niggas. This Jesuit cross is the same thing you're looking at right here. Can you see it? Those with their third eye open going to see that Moses is the Jesuit cross. I'm going to do a, do a uh, survey with my chat room. How many? The name Moses is Moses. Moses. Listen, people. The waters are separated by the dry lands. Look. Moses is. You see, Moses. Moses got. A stick in his hand right Moses carry a staff in his hand and Moses represent the North Pole like I said Moses is noses the North Pole is the North nose the nose the North is the nose the Norse the nose and it's a pole just like your nose is a point or a pole and it breathes it allows the earth to breathe Think of a snorkel, and you know if you under the water, you need that pipe sticking up out of the surface so you can breathe. Yo, that pole that's going through all these worlds is what spits out the, the, the is what keeps these worlds breathing. That's like our snorkeling device to the great mother, the umbilical cord to keep us living. Moses in between the two pillars of water is the earth, the north pole splitting the sun and moon 
the waters from the waters. Moses carried that stick and he represent the North Pole in between those two pillars, two piles of water. See, that water is the sky. What splits our sky in half is the North Pole. Yes, our atmosphere is made of uh, least dense water. It's water vapor, basically. And yeah, the sky outside is water. You are fish in a bowl. Air is a form of water. And what split the waters from the waters or divide the waters, what they call in the dry land represents an element that is not air. It's aether. Ether is simply electromagnetic energy. It's the fourth element which governs the other three. So Moses represents the ether because he's able to make the water do what he wanted to do. Just like the North Pole make all the ocean water divide. In the middle of our earth, the North Pole is controlling the elements. In the middle of these seas, you see Moses controlling the elements. In the middle of your face is something called a nose that's controlling the element called wind. It's controlling that. It got that on lock. Your nose controls the wind. And Moses had to use the wind in order to pile the water up. So noses, excuse me, Moses is our noses. Moses is our noses. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. I'm still on my break. I just had to cut in and say that. And they can see that this image that they given our people with Moses splitting the sea is the Jesuit cross. How many people can see? Yeah, see, when you look at the back of an envelope, you see the mystery of the Jesuit cross. The envelope shows you how everything is sealed inside of an electromagnetic energy field. And this energy field is the secret of the Jesuits, brothers and sisters. That's why Brother Sanchez is coming to you right now so passionate to give it to you. Here's your Jesuit cross right here. Here it is. Electromagnetic energy. This is your Jesuit cross. Right here. Electromagnetic energy. It's a Jesuit cross because it's a Jesus cross. Why don't you know the word Jesuit is Jesus? Now, this cross represents electromagnetic energy. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it because this is the secret that they hide in y'all. This is what our children need to be studying. This will put them on a level of Nikola Tesla, y'all. Make you a genius. This the cross. All of them are geniuses because they know the origin stories. They know the secret of our genesis. See, the root word of genius is genesis, Jan. The Jan was a deity that represent human origins, how everything began or be Jan. Be okay, I'm back, y'all. And I'm just appreciating y'all bearing with me uh, because... I, I ain't gonna let you down. Uh, now, now look at here, right? Uh, I want to just talk about this NASA and nasal a minute. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me see something here, right? Because 
think we can shut all of this down. We talked about convergence. Yeah, we talked about curvature. Okay, yeah, we can start getting deep, people. Because I knocked out more than I thought I knocked out. That's good, man. We can move on to the next section for this third hour. But one thing we got to keep in mind, yo, NASA is nasal. They are nosy. They're trying to peek over those ethereal boundaries the wrong way. You got to knock on the door. Okay? Look here, people. To knock on the door is to kick the grade, kick the bucket. Nature got a system, just like the school system got. You can't go to fifth grade if you didn't go through the grades, man. And it's not fair to a fifth grade student if we just let that doggone uh, kid who's supposed to be in first grade just skip and go to fifth. Only time they do that is when you got what? Geniuses. Like I just said, the word genius is God. See, gods can skip through the grades. Gods, we can skip to the, through the grades because we just entering and exiting these classrooms to help the students. So a God can go into the ninth grade class and help them out with algebra, then leave up out of there and go to the kindergarten class and help them with some shit. Because you a God. You can go in and out of these different grades. And there's people doing that. It's guardian angels coming in. I'm one of them. You one of them, people. All right, we, we, we skip through the gradients. We skip, skip through these different grades. And how you know we're, we're on that level is because whatever you're doing now is, is what you, you was doing in the spirit before you were manifested. If you was about enlightening other people in your lifetime, guess what? On a spiritual level, your spirit enlightened peoples. Like you are who you are, your energy, right? So what I'm saying is we came here and you got to think about what, what a knock mean, right? Knock is not. Look at the nose, right? The nose makes noise. Don't It ain't loud, but when you inhale and exhale, it makes a noise. The nose makes a noise because it's generating life. It's inhaling and exhaling. It's allowing the soul to enter the world. Did you hear me? Without the body, the soul can't enter this realm and have an experience here. But without the nose, the goddamn body is, can't function. So the nose now becomes a loophole that connects the spirit to the body. Why? Because your spirit was inhaled through the nose. And it's going to be, you're going to take that last breath out of that nose. Yep, yep, I'm saying the nose, that which allowed the breath of the spirit to enter you and exit you. And you do it every day. You inhale and exhale to stay alive. But when you finally leave this place, you're going to blow your life force out of the nose. Nine times out of ten. Or the mouth. But we understand that what we're saying, you know, with the nose. But it's like the gateway. You know, because it allows uh, the spiritual body to be connected with the physical body, just like the vein system. See, the nose feeds the electrical body. And then electrical body, your electrical body is the most skinniest skeleton. Think of your huge, chunky flesh. Now, inside of that, you got a skinny skeleton. But within all of that, you got an even skinnier vein system. And if I take out your vein system and lay it out next to your skeleton, you'll see the trinity of what you are. Flesh, bone, electricity. And the thinnest one is the electrical body. If I put your meaty flesh next to your bone skeleton, next to your vein body, 
that all of your veins running through the body like the skeletal system. That's an electrical skeleton. That's the spirit. That's electric. That's pure electricity. That's why the veins are blue. Because electricity is blue. Now, that electrical body is what you transmit to consciousness. Right? So, literally, when the blood dries up, it ascends as gas to the next uh, reality. The blood in your veins going to be in your veins in your next life, too. You ain't getting new blood. The same blood that's in your veins, when you move on to the next realm of existence, it's going to be the same blood in that body, too. Just uh, uh, clench now through the, through the North Pole cycle. All the elements got to get clenched. You got to break down and be clenched. When you do laundry, you sort them out in order. And that's what's going to happen to us. What I'm saying is, uh, before I get all over the place, hold on a second, got a little noise in the background. So what I'm saying is, uh, the nose is a knock. It's a knock. When you knock, it sound like this. And you get that noise by making your fist go up and down, up and down. You can't escape it. You cannot knock or you cannot push a doorbell without contraction and expansion. If you come to my house and you want to get in the door, let me show, you got to listen to what I'm telling you people because I'm, I'm finna go deep now. If you come to my house and you want to get in the door, you got to use this law that I'm telling you, contraction and expansion. Even if you push the doorbell, you just contracted and expanded a button. Or if you knock on the door, you just contracted and expanded your knuckle on the goddamn door in and out. You got to give me that dual action to enter the door. So what I'm saying is when you entered the earth, you had to knock and, and, and do that dual action in order for this place to open the door. And what that was was inhaling the wind here. See, when you inhale your first breath on this earth, you exhale your last breath in the spirit. You pass in that breath. When your spirit exhaled, you inhaled and found yourself inhaled in this physical reality. Now, when you when your body exhaled. Your spirit is exiting hell. People, your breath, your blood is who you are. Nothing can touch that. The wind in your lungs, can't nobody trap that in a jar or see it. This is why they, they, they when, when they talking about transferring your consciousness into a hard drive, don't you know that they're taking your electrical, your consciousness can fit on a, on a drive now. All they doing is taking the electrical currency. Your blood is everything who you are and putting it into another skin. Because in your blood, it tells me what food you like, how you walk, all of that. And once I take that electrical current out of your veins and wire it into this subhuman, you die and your personality is now in a robot and that'll be fucking weird and scary to look at look at because it'll be exactly you but it'll be a robot mimicking you down to the t and it'll really be you in the robot like oh i gotta stop saying robot that would be a cyborg a robot is something that's programmed to say 
I love you, I hate you, it's only gonna do what it's programmed. A cyborg is a robot with a real human consciousness controlling it. Meaning they found out how to inject the soul of a human in a machine. So the machine is the motherfucking human, the personality of them and everything. That's the difference between a robot and cyborg. So they're trying to create cyborgs. The word cy is dealing with two. That's why you call Siamese twins, Siamese twins. So the cyborg is a blend of human consciousness controlling a machine that they created because they don't like the human body. They believe they can do a better job than nature. They say, you know, nature got our consciousness in these little stanky flesh machines that have to poop and pee and they get musty. And the people that run the world don't like that. That's why they got stuff to make you pee less, pills you can take to make your shit don't stink and you don't shit as much, shit to put under your arms to make you not musty. They want to create the human body and you put your consciousness in they shit because they think they can do a better job than nature. But what this proves is what Nikola Tesla said is true. All matter is lifeless without electricity. Like a robot without a battery, your body will die without your electro electronic frequency, what they're calling blood. So they're taking your plasma, putting it into a machine, and you will open up your eyes and look at your hands and realize you are a fucking robot. That's going to be possible. It is possible now. So like I was telling you earlier, what we do with dreams, right? You close your eyes and go to sleep and you open your eyes and you now shifted your consciousness into another body. That's what happened when we dream. You close your eyes because the eyelids are doorways. Why you think the eyelids shaped like this cosmos and you open up the dream body eyes. Okay, shifting that consciousness. Same thing. They know that. They anybody that dream know that consciousness can be transmitted, and the people that rule the world has already created the technology where you can go to sleep and they can shift your damn consciousness into a damn computer virtual reality and you can live out your life in a computer people they got like uh i think it's 50 monkeys dude told me to research this i researched it they got a monkey consciousness living in a computer and it's a couple monkeys they got now living out their life in the computer and they can go and check and see what they doing and stuff through the computer and the monkey is peeing, pooping, eating, and all that, but it's in a virtual reality. They shifted the, the mind of the monkey into a virtual world, in a virtual body. So you can go to sleep, and you can wake up in goddamn Fortnite. I'm serious, you motherfucker. You can go to sleep and fuck around and wake up and call a duty, man. Like, yo, these motherfuckers that trap me in Call of Duty. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That shit's possible, man. It's showing you that we live in an electric universe, right? And the root word of electricity is L, which is the name of Christ. El Elyon, El Shaddai, El this, okay? Now, when you talk about when, when you enter this world, you had to knock on the door. That's why they say your mama was knocked up. Y'all need to start looking at the words we use. We call a pregnant woman knocked up because that's a spirit knocking on the door. The earth shaped like a door. And women are the gateway. They the doorbell. See, when you come to my house, you want to enter the house. But it's something in between you and you enter. It's something in between you doing that. And that's making yourself known. What you gonna do to enter my house? 
how you going to get through the door. You can either knock or ring the doorbell. Now, if you listen to music, that's what they tell you. The woman got a song called, You Ring My Bell. 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 You ring my bell, you ring my belly. Put the Y on the end of bell. The baby is a vibrational ringing that the woman captures in her bell or belly. So we do ring the bell to enter this door or we the mama get knocked up because we're knocking on that door. And you know, I got a saying every now and then and, and, and entertain, make this thing not be so dry, you know. And sometimes I have to do little things to get them smiley faces up out of y'all. Y'all like that. You ring my bell. That voice, right? That part, right? Like, nigga, if you're going to sing it, at least wake up, nigga. Splash water on your face. You fucking the song up. Like, you can tell a nigga who's singing like that got boogers in his eyes, right? You ring my... Like, slap him and tell that nigga don't sing it if he ain't going to... Nigga, put some emphasis on it. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all, man. That, that, uh, hey, that was kind of funny though Singing that shit Dead as hell <laughs> You ring my bell <laughs> Alright bro We get it Shut up my nigga I used to like that song <laughs> For he fucked it up You can't sing in more monotone Than that right That was monotone in the mother You ring my bell Like nigga Can we get a little emphasis. <laughs> Let me stop, man. But but I just wanted to point that out. So we talk about uh, Moses splitting the sea. And you can see that with the sperm as well. Moses represent the seat of the sperm. When the sperm enters that egg, it splits it right in the middle. It becomes the North Pole. See, and that's why I'm showing you <coughs> we're at the center of our own reality. So Moses represent the sperm creating the dry land. See that egg? See that egg is water. It's a plasma fluid inside of that egg. And before the sperm gets in there, there's nothing split. It is like an ocean. But when the sperm drives itself in the middle of that water, the sperm represents the dry land in the middle of all that water that was in that egg. So the sperm become Moses. It pokes his head into another reality. And because it does that, it transforms into something else, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Now, I want you to look at that sperm on the left, and I want you to say, that's me. I want you to really look at this picture on the left and understand you came from that. Like, you, you got to understand that you was moving around as this little thing and you had an intelligence. You knew what the fuck that I had to get to this egg because I'm trying to get in that doorway, man, so I can make a body for myself. You don't think the sperm knew that? Yeah, you knew that. But you didn't have to remember it once you became the body. Right. Once the sperm turned into a human, it don't it don't remember what the fuck it was doing as a sperm. 
That's like asking a baby, do you remember being born? Uh, asking a baby, do you remember swimming into that egg? It don't remember because it has a new brain now. See, that sperm had a brain, but when the sperm became a human, it, tra it traded that brain it, that it had as a sperm for a new brain as a human, and that new brain don't remember it, the sperm existence. See how this work? The moment that cat, don't you know when a caterpillar become a butterfly, it don't remember how to be a caterpillar no more. It only know how to fly now. You can't make it go backwards. You can't re, it don't remember shit about crawling around on the ground as a caterpillar once it transformed. The memory is there in a form of muscle memory, subconscious memory, but it can't tell you what it was doing as a caterpillar. It only has a life from the moment it bust out of that cocoon and started to fly as a butterfly. The moment it transformed from a caterpillar to a butterfly, it don't remember what it was doing as a caterpillar. You don't remember what you was doing as a sperm. Once you broke, once you made that transformation, the memory of the sperm transformed when the sperm transformed to the human. Now, when you die, this life right here going to be play out vague just the same way. And you're going to keep moving upward. You, 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 can you remember what it's like when you didn't know two plus two was four? You can't remember that. But you know it's four now and can't nobody kind of make you go believe that two plus two is eight. Because you can't undo that now. That butterfly learned how to fly and nature ain't going to let it go back to being a caterpillar. And, the, and how nature prevented from doing that is by just taking that memory away. See? Nature only give you what you need to become greater, not to move motherfucking backwards. All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to wrap this up here now. Uh, I think that's I, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I want to talk to y'all about see because this some deep shit I'm telling you here. Right? Let me show you some. Here go the nose from, from this view. What does this look like? This looks like nut bent over gale, shoe in the middle, and the two thieves right there. I told you I was going to give you cosmology using the nose. Don't laugh, but let's learn. Look here. These two birds represent the sun and moon. Those are portals, gateways. Here they go right here. These the two birds right here. And if you look at the nostrils, they kind of look like birds. These dark holes are the two birds. The wings are flapping when the wind, see the wind is the wings. The wind is the wings or the birds, the wind, the, the root word of bird is by, that's dealing with two. These are the birds, the openings, the nostrils. Right here on the side of shoe, these two birds. Now shoe, right? Shoe represents this little separator. Right here, here goes shoe. Here goes shoe hooked up the nut, right? Right? Same way, NASA is nasal. Same way, right? Okay, now, just to get you, get, get it in your head, all right?
I told you we're going to make it fun. We're going to use the nose, man. And it, it, it even make it a little funny for you, too, because you can't have boogers in your nose if you want to get a picture like that. Yeah, you better make sure your nose clean before you snap a picture like that. Otherwise, we'll see G.I. Joe and, and all them army men, you know. But <laughs> let me quit playing with y'all. So again, sinus is sine wave. And uh, I, I, I just, I have to do this. When you, when you teaching something like this, man, you, you want to be redundant. I'd rather be accused of being redundant than he didn't give us enough to grasp what he was saying. If you, if you walk away saying, yo, he was extra redundant and gave too much, that's a compliment. Rather give you too much than too little. So here, man, your nose is made the same way your face is made, as you can see. Like I said, the sinus part is the nose, and the root word of sinus is sine wave. Now, a Taurus or a turtle have a hump back or a hump shell, and that's why I'm showing you this. The nose, right? That nosy turtle, the Taurus field. It's because each one of these noses peeks up into a different world. Each one of these barriers has a foot in one world, below it, and one above it. And that's what a nosy neighbor does. They straddle the fence. So when you, I'm giving you etymology so you can see what I'm doing, I'm showing you the spiritual meaning of these words before they became, you know, just, okay, he knows it, you know. P think about Pinocchio. Right? Pinocchio. So it's crazy that a nosy neighbor often looks through blinds and if you look at blinds, it's shaped like the ether. It's staggered. It's like the step pyramid. It's like the many layers of the earth. When we, when we looking out at the sky and we're trying to figure out about the stars, see, the symbolism is always the same. That's why I'm able to do this. My third eye is open and I'm able to see that is one code and is all the same. When you nosy and you peeking through them blinds, it's the same way of a spiritual person trying to see about these different realms of existence. And you looking through the layers trying to see the whole picture. Okay. And you see, like I said, a nose is, is when we were talking about the uh, the nosy neighbor, right? It's deep because each one of these domes shaped like a nose. And it's because each one of these domes have that pole in the middle that makes it look like a nostril. So each one is a nose that's poking its nose into the next one. This is how a cosmos is made, y'all. Just imagine a bunch of nosy motherfuckers behind the next one trying to peek into their yard. That's how we communicate with the dead through the ethers or the netters. All right, so the crazy thing about this is that we talk about knocking on the door or putting the key into the door is putting the nail into the coffin. See, this can be interpreted many ways. 
a key inside of a door or a nail inside of a coffin. Either way it go, this is the way, the truth, and the life that I'm giving you. Because this is how the soul enters. These barriers are connected in the middle by that pole. And that's, that pole is a portal. And when, when I'm talking about, you know, this north being the nostrils for the earth, okay? Nostril, the nose trail, okay? Inhale and exhale. At the north pole, you see souls coming and leaving. And it looked like the aurora, or aurora borealis, which is a highway of light. People coming in, it's babies being born right now, and it's people dying right now, and all that spirit, all that light is leaving and, and leaving the earth, coming to the earth. You see it crammed up at the North Pole like a traffic jam, and this is what it looked like. It looked like a four-way boulevard and that became Jesus. See? See? That 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 that's called the crossroads, right? And it's where all the traffic pile up at that crossroads. That's why they call it Mount Calvary. It's a mountain because it's a pile of souls. All trying to fit in a little bitty hole. It's a traffic jam. So what happens is when you die, you got to wait your turn. They talk about ghosts and spirits. Yeah, because when you die, you got the journey back to the North Pole. And you got all, guess what, people wait in line. Because when you die, it's so, it, guess what, every millisecond somebody dying. And when you die, it's going to be uh, stand your ass in line. And we all trying to get into that little opening and, and, and go on to the next world. Okay. It's a traffic jam, a four-way boulevard, because you got people dying all over the world. And when people die, no matter what continent they in, we all go back home to the North Pole. And it's a big-ass traffic jam. Or crossroads. So Bones says, see you at the crossroads. So you won't be lonely. Of course you won't be lonely. You're going to be pissed off like, man, this line need to move. God, can you hurry up? Shit, don't you need, y'all need, y'all hiring? Because damn it, this traffic jam is ridiculous. I hate traffic. I got, I'm going to be one of them spirits in line with, with, with road rage, man. Let me through. Hey, God damn it! I was a teacher. Can I skip? <laughs> hey, hey! I had a YouTube channel. Damn it! Can I skip? Yeah, let him go on cut, man. He did. You know they they assassinated his ass. You know. Yeah, that's Bro Sanchez. Yeah, they assassinated him. Let that man skip, man. Oh, you won't be lonely when you die. The line gonna be long as fuck at that crossroads. You know how many people dying? You ain't gonna be alone. So that ought to give you comfort. Like when you leave the body and journey back home, man, you gonna see so many light bodies going ahead and racing back with you. See, the closer, see, see, everybody on earth, when you die, whatever city you live in, it's going to be people all around the world dying at the same time you die because one thing is constant is life and death. Every second, people all around the world going back to the center. So that's what them hours represent. Right now, as I talk, it's stars rushing toward the North Pole. It's people, it's somebody just died right now and they spirit are rushing back toward that North Pole right now and it just happened again. Damn, it just happened again. It's happening right now. And when it's your turn, 
you gonna race back toward that center where they said Christ gonna be waiting on you. Where the word Christ is really crease is where our reality folds up and they call it the edge of the earth. And you reach a crossroads where you get the what they call leap between worlds like when Mario travel down the pipe and he can go to different worlds and you get to go to worlds uh, above or below or back here you get to make the choice but if you like me I'm going to move on to my next destination now some people do deals with the devil when they die they say look you can reincar reincarnate me back to that hell hole if you let me be a famous rapper this time and you let me remember my life who I was, I won't tell nobody. And so you got a lot of celebrities and famous people who died before made the deal to come back because they liked it this place, but they wanted to experience it better. Me, I'm moving the fuck on. Now, but anyway, uh, again, we all journeying back home, back to that tree of life, right? And as all of these souls that's dying travel back to that little dot, they start to transform. The closer they get to the North Pole, they find themselves turning from, in, from a sperm into, excuse me, all of the people that's dying, their spirits are traveling back to the North Pole but as they get closer and closer to the North Pole, you would think all of them would be meeting up, but they all begin to separate as they reach the same place. How does that work? Let me show you. As each one of these souls that travel back to the North Pole reach, reach closer and closer to the North Pole, they transform from a spirit to a sperm. If you think you are you, think that you are a spirit going back home to the North Pole when by the time you get to the North Pole what you will be is a sperm you're a spark a sperm is a spurt a spurt of energy that spurted out of a dead body back to the source but see, your spirit transforms itself as it travels through these ethereal barriers. And by the time you tr get back to the North Pole, you would have been a transform from a spirit back to the sperm, replaying this shit all over again <clears throat> in a higher level. And when you die in that level, guess what? You're going to journey back to the pole so you can be transformed back to a sperm again and another egg. The sperm in the egg is the human in the earth. It's micro and macro. It's a fractal code. When you entered that egg, you was trying to enter this earth. So you entered the egg to enter the earth. You don't just enter the fucking earth from a micro to macro. All right, you enter the earth on a micro level to enter it on the macro level. So you entered your mother, you entered the portal through the mother and it looked at like you, you was trying to, and see, here's the thing. This the trick nature play on you. You don't think you a sperm. You think you a damn ghost trying to enter this big old world. Because you remember that, hey, there's people there and I can have a life there. This sperm became Casper, the ghost. Now, what I just told you what a sperm is, is a spurt. Casper, the ghost. Ka is the spirit. When it spurts, it's a ghost or a sprite. A sprite is a spurt. You got to rearrange the word sprite and put the aura where the eye is and it'll be spurt, not sprite. Seven up, listen, seven is the number of completion. When you go back home or you spurt back to the source as a spark. 
but they give it to the drink because the bubbles in the drink go up to the surface. Just like all of these, let me show you. Let me show you. All of us humans are bubbles. All of us are bubbles. And what happens is, see, your spirit is a bubble. And just like when you pour a drink in a glass, you see the bubbles rising up to the surface. Your spirit is a bubble. But the reason your spirit ain't risen up to the surface to heaven yet is because your body is weighing it down. When your body die, that bubble is what was who you really is. And that's who you're going to be. And you're going to spurt or sprite to the surface. Okay. When your body ain't no longer in the middle of that to anchor it to the earth, that thing ain't going to bust up to the surface just like bubbles at the bottom of a drink cup. And you're going to see that all along you was just a seed in the ground waiting to break the surface to become a tree. That's what the body is. The body is a seed that the soul plants in this dense dirt in this rail so it can sprout because the word spurt is the word sprout and the word spirit. That completes today's lesson. <clears throat> You are Jesus. You are the Christ. Can't men hold your energy. And when you travel back home, you're going to travel back home to your next mama. And it's going to be those same mama in a better version. It seems like in this lifetime, we can't quite die happy with ourselves that in this realm we die incomplete in this realm it's very rare where you get a person die a hundred percent satisfied because it's so much drama here it's so much things that that fucks with your self-esteem who you are you don't you back and forth on how you feel about yourself and that's because this is a pun or a world where the spirit is pondering what it want to become next. You a seed in the ground. And when you break the surface, we're going to see what kind of tree you are. See, whatever you do, let me show you. See, when you came to this earth, your soul planted a seed in this reality. And when you die, you're transforming the energy of your soul with this place. See, your soul can't transform what it is without making the body to calibrate its energy. It's not, not the root word of, let me break the, something down to you. When you say calibrate, the word calibrate is also the word celebrate. So whether we celebrate childbirth, we, we celebrate childbirth because we know that children are souls that are coming here to calibrate. So we celebrate the calibration. We have a celebration for the calibration. When you say calibrate, you're saying ka, which is the spirit, and liberate. Ka, liberate. See, the spirit can't liberate itself without the body. It has to have an experience in the flesh to transform what it is as pure energy. So it is life that you're living and the emotions, the depression, frustration is what your soul taking to alter its energy. These feelings we have, depression, frustration, happiness, joy, is what exists for eternity on the spirit. This is what build a soul. The, this is the spiritual realm bleeding into the physical realm. So the, the spiritual realm controls the physical realm because the physical realm is governed by emotions. 
That's why they call emotions because what we feel in our heart is what puts humanity in motion. You don't do nothing you don't love or you may do something you don't love because you love money, right? Either way it go, you're emotion driven. The sperm is driven to the egg by the strongest emotion in the universe and that's love. The sperm loves reality. It loves the body and the body loves the spirit. See, the thing is this and we'll get out of here. The spirit will stay the same. It will never change if there was nothing to alter the spirit's energy. The body alters the spirit's energy. Okay? The physical realm is an alternative realm for the spirit. So when you when the spirit assumes a body, when the body dies, the spirit changes from the life experience of the human. It the, this life experience is a seed that's meant to grow your spirit into something different. So the spirit is like a caterpillar that constantly enters these worlds to become a better and better butterfly. So if you look at the word caterpillar, you will see that the word caterpillar is ka, dealing with the spirit, ter, dealing with the earth, and the pillars that separate the earths. They are cocoons, people. They are cocoons, okay? You are a caterpillar. Remember that the caterpillar is a sine wave. The serpent, the spirit is the same. And we enter these cocoons so we can fly away to higher places. Remember, you got to go down and go up. You got to bend your knees to jump. So you had to come down here to get to where you're trying to go. This place right here is where you came. This is a place to fuel up so you can launch your rocket to higher heights. That's what this is. So it ain't a pleasant place because you're on your way to that pleasant place and you had to come through here to get you there. So it, it, nature ain't gonna never let you be comfortable. Whenever you reach a realm that you don't wanna leave from, you stop growing. So there will never be a heaven is like a, a donkey with a carrot in front of his face. You keep moving up, chasing heaven, but when you get up there, it's better than the world below, but it's still not heaven. The moment the creator give you heaven, guess what? You stop growing. So you keep looking up for that better state of existence. And that keeps you in motion. Now, I'm going to stop right there because I just wanted to leave y'all with that, that nothing can stop your growth and your development but you and you closing your mind and you uh, volunteering to stay on a certain level of awareness. We knocked on the door to come into this world and your mama, your parents answer the calling. You knocked on that door and the door was open. Now, when you leave here, and see, this the thing, and, and, and I swear we leaving after this. <clears throat> Just like I was telling you, each one of these bleeds into the next one. And if you ever deal with a mute movie editing software, look at some called Cross Dissolves. That's what this is. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? We'll talk about Cross Dissolves later. I got to get out of here. We don't want to make it too long. Um, but I do, I want to call out the super chats before we go. So stick around. I'm about to call out super chats. Hold on a second.
Hey, yo, let me give a big shout out to the brother LaShawn Thomas. Said your past Monday live still got my mind working. Your channel is actually a university. Salute. Salute to you, LaShawn. Thank you. My brother Minds, I say I want to say your lifetime mission loves you back in this life. I accept that your mission was address you went to it and went through it so much are woke so many are woke due to you helping yourself we see clearly much love minds i love you brother appreciate it much love my brother tim truth um thank you for the super chat be strong appreciate the love my brother fly or die says you going deep on him right now man yeah, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a complete this. I'm gonna do a part two, so stay with me. Follow the series, hit the like button, hit the share button. Shout out the Neo Guru. Appreciate all of y'all support. Caught you trolling. Say, don't stop waking up, folks. I won't, my brother. Thank you. And my brother Omar Little, thank you for the donation. Said, how do we build from home an electromagnetic device to power my home? You need to watch uh, the past stream we did. We had a brother that built one, and he's going to be coming back to teach, up, teach us how to do it step by step. So just stick around, and we'll be answering that uh, in detail. Shout out to Yo Melody Incorporated. You're welcome. Thank all of y'all for these donations. Yvonne Ruffin, thank you, sister. Sage Queen, much love to you, sister. And a big shout out to Minds Eye. A hey, shout out to my brother Roderick, back to your roots urge, all of my moderators, Michael Ward, MJ Givens, Inquisitive Bunny, Everything's Love, One World, One Hood, Lady Legs, Sir Drop out there, shout out to all of y'all. Uh, man, shout out to all of y'all, Deuce Muse, Unique Unity, uh, Empath Goddess, Huey P. Uh, shout out to y'all brothers, man. Uh, you know, I'm gonna let I'm gonna go and get up out of here because we want to save some of this knowledge for the next stream. I don't want to overwhelm you. So that's enough for the day. Peace and much love, guys.